Hi, my name is Ram from Mantra Surf Club. And I am uh, Kiran from Mantra. I am Ravi from Mantra, one of the four members. Surfing Swami is the one who started this surfing sport. Uh, he introduced this sport to us when we were very young, around like when I was like 11, 12, like that. Ram and uh, Ravi, they were my uh, friends since you know, from childhood. So we all grew up together. That's right, man. That's the leash. These are the lucky little local residents of Mulki. When they sleep at night, they don't hear sirens or horns. They hear the crashing of the waves. They spend their time behind the waves, underneath the waves, on top of the waves, around the waves, in between the waves. Any possible relationship they can have with the waves, they have. Our adventures continue here at the Mantra Surf Club in Mulki and we've been here for quite some time now but we have never mentioned these young little kids falling in the water. They have been friends of the ocean since they were around 7 or 8 years old and feel as comfortable in it as we could ever hope to. Before this place was a surf club, it used to be an ashram of the surfing swami. And today we are very interested to learn the philosophies and morals they followed and how they related to surfing. Because we've realized this ecstasy and joy that you feel on top of the waves is not all, there is more to it. And luckily we have some people over here today, Ram, Ravi and Kiran who've lived here for almost two decades are going to share their knowledge with us. So we all grew up together and, and we introduced this sport, surfing sport to us and we really liked it. And that's when the idea came that we used to travel and surf for uh, we used to travel for three months to Mahabalipuram, Kerala to do surfing. Then we really liked it. We used to surf for you know seven to eight hours a day like that. So that's when Swami thought, okay, we should uh, uh, balance our devotion life with this sport. So back in 2003, we were passing by and we found this nice place, patch of land with a small house. And uh, Swami, you know, he just had this moment. Just, it just came to his mind that, okay, this is the place that we should, uh, uh, we should start the surfing club. Absolutely. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think on, on trips when we did the surf trips, you no, know, then we used to actually just specifically travel for surfing, and you know everything was all about just surfing. You know. And I was like, you know, you wake up in early in the morning and you're just all excited to go surfing, and you know you're all talking about surfing. You go surfing, you spend so many hours, you come back and you still talk about surfing. That's when we realized, oh, okay, you know, it's really it does the bug is. And back then uh, we didn't yeah. have. We didn't add many boards, so we only had like two, maximum three boards. That's it. Yeah. Rami had a board, I had a board, and another friend of mine had a board. So we all 
like had to switch take turns to you know surf also and uh, yeah every time we surf back then it was around like 7 to 8 hours minimum per day also we we took some snacks to the beach we used to go around 5:30 in the morning spend the whole day and come back to you know yeah so i think that was the time we realized this is something which is going to be a part of our life for a very long time Uh, so for many years, at least in the beginning, four to five years, this was just our home. Uh, you know, so we stayed upstairs, downstairs, and a couple of other rooms were just for our own ashram guests. Until this one article, the very first article which came out, called the Surfing Swamis. That's where the title came on Huffington Post. So there was a journalist who came down in, from Delhi in 2007. So then, after a few months, we kind of slowly opened up the doors for uh, for the guests, but on our terms and you know conditions, which we still follow today. So of course, it was used to be all vegetarian, you know, sattvic food. Uh, you know, we didn't allow any alcohol or you know, smoking and use of tobacco, or certain things, and uh, yeah, and you know, one has to respect the. Ladies, you know, when they come as guests, so all those things for the for the you know the terms and conditions back then. Yeah. And of course, you know, we did other things as well. It, so none of us actually stayed continuously in this place. You know, we balanced it out with other things as well, you know, other interests, you know, other activities. It didn't take us long to realize that this place is not just about surfing. There are so many other activities that follow the same philosophy. A holistic living where each day is a beautiful day. In the mornings, despite all the mosquitoes, we would all gather and do yoga and stretch ourselves out before we all hit the waves together to learn a lesson in humility by the ocean. This very thought brought another question in my mind: as to what role did the ocean play in all of this? Because uh, while these guys were surfing, I was a lot into cycling. So I would always relate myself more to hills and mountains than to ocean. But then once I started, you know, regularly surfing, then I think my love towards ocean, you know, grew a lot more than you know what it was towards cycling. So then it was more like oh yeah you know ocean is really the focus that was needed you know I like ocean way more than way more than mountains <laughs> and uh, you can see in one of the interviews where Swami is talking about you know what uh, connection is there with spirituality and the ocean or with surfing specifically and he says basically there is no you know connection in terms of like surfing and the spiritual. Right. Even though we came from the ashram, a lot of people feel like, oh, you know, there must be some kind of surfing and spirituality in that lifestyle, a sort of a thing. But Swami makes it very clear: the spirituality doesn't lie in a certain activity or sports or anything. It lies in what we do. Coincidentally, at that very moment, someone was sitting outside, focusing their mind on a singular task, and her focus was so attractive. that other people wanted to join her I'm Shilpa I'm a self taught artist I usually travel with my sketchbooks many of them I uh, make small watercolor paintings of whatever inspires me in my travel this is one such book and I'm here in Mulki uh, with a lot of cool people out here as usual I sit I have claimed this table and I make uh, watercolor sitting here I found a company and uh, they want to join and make watercolors with me So we are going to do a quick sunset in watercolor washes. Work with the shadows like this. This is how. Yeah, that's how. Just pull it down. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. A very small market as at least we are serving. Who wants juice? Do you want juice? Is that painted? Oh, that's very 
you made that one yeah she made all his t-shirts all my t-shirts have been in this so i just buy this one particular <laughs> totally like wash them like sure. regular clothes oh, right Is it painting some Goku's now? So, but like, I really ask people how much I'll you try. pay for a handmade art. Conversation with Shilpa was just as colorful as her artwork, and even though all the people sitting here might not see each other again, it did not stop us from getting lost in an evening of chit-chatting, drinking juice, painting, and sharing life stories. So the last trip that we did, we took our car because uh, we had our dog with us, um, and we started off from the coast of Maharashtra all the way up to the uh, Delhi. Huh? You are traveling all this. Mostly. I would like to do one. You too. Because a music degree is practically useless. That's what everyone says. Are you recording this? No, no. I'm just pointing the camera for fun. Why? Why? What about Berkeley, man? Berkeley, dude. It's it's not in Bangalore. Ah, but you can apply for Berkeley, man. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, costs but, a lot. Uh, costs a lot. Not if you get a scholarship. Yay! Yay! <laughs> We had so much fun painting this sunset with Shilpa. Yeah, I had great fun. You are great students. <laughs> Ishan is useless. Half of this was done by Shilpa. No, no. Or no. Just have to put that out there. Yeah, Ishan didn't do this. Ishan didn't do this. Why? It's good. Just leather. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, ah, ah. I think you should mention them. And your board, <laughs> you made too. your board properly. <laughs> she helped because she's sweet, and I'm a noob. So yeah. And I'm not. That's a lie. I again dipped my brush <laughs> into the pineapple juice. Uh-huh. Uh, lifestyle over here. Is such that you know we try to have a proper routine, have a very disciplined uh, lifestyle where we go to bed early, you know, and wake up early and have all the morning activities, and just to start the day and have the day in a very uh, disciplined way. And that, as a lifestyle, surfing is something that's very important if you want to progress in surfing and if you want to actually become very serious in surfing. I think having a very disciplined life is very helpful. But if you want to become a very uh, progressive surfer, somebody who also uh, uh, connects to the environment, connects to the ocean, and all of it, then lifestyle plays a major role. You know, having a discipline, because uh, yeah, I think one of the things that Swami really uh, taught us is to be invested and completely in what we do, whether it was surfing or whether it was you know something like photography or design or whatever it was, whatever we did. He always would tell us, you know, pay attention to details and be completely invested in it. You know, just don't, don't be halfway into anything. I think that's one uh, very important thing we learned from Swami. You know, be completely invested in something. You know, every wave, every day, it's very different, and you cannot carry over something what you had yesterday. To be aware and to be present in that moment. You know, when that wave comes and when you catch that wave. And that's it. It's it's just that one wave that you have, and you ride it, and that's it. It's done. Uh, surfing is very one of those very few sports uh, that have it. I can I really cannot think of any other sports where where everything is in you know movement. Everything is moving, and you just have to be right there you know, and not be anywhere else. You're learning. There's a lot of humility which you need to have because you know one day you think, oh, you conquered it. You got ten waves. The next day you may not even catch you know, a single wave for whatever reason, and that teaches you a lot of uh, humility. That you know, no matter how good we think we are, you know, we can have a a very humbling day at the ocean, in the ocean.
you know the best surfer out there is the one having you know the most fun basically the thing is we cure out there in the water thinking oh you know if i'm going to catch the most number of waves or if i'm going to ride the longest way or do any of that then maybe you will not be that happy person but if you just go and whatever wave you get you have fun with it and you enjoy that and goes back to you know just being in that moment and if you can do that if you can just enjoy your time in the ocean and come back and feel like yeah you know you had a pretty good day and yeah that's it you are the best of the day while we were there we never thought about all these things so deeply like ravi said we were just there to have fun we went out every morning and had as much fun as we possibly could came back had our lunch at the same time every day did our things had our dinner together with everyone at the same time every day and went to sleep at the same time every day. and like machine made days we lived them again and again cherishing each one and enjoying them even more so it was much later that we learned the impact this kind of a lifestyle had on our consciousness It was much later that we learned how we've changed, or how the ocean has changed us. Did here too. I wrote my name here. He scratched it and signed here. So bad. I can't erase it completely or else the thing color Why have you written going. sunset here because it's not obvious that this is the sunset Hey chumma I wrote you think it's what is chumma hey, chumma <laughs> chumma what is this chumma is heavy heavy chumma is heavy chumma is heavy or what uh, yes chumma is heavy I'm going to abuse color. that word a lot chumma is I've already chumma. been saying it since two days without knowing what you meant <laughs> chumma is heavy or for chumma ha simply it's like simply it's like malayalam ha so heavy like hindi is that only idol art Idol art. 